So now we are going to study small and large intestine pathologies. Before we start the pathologies, we must know that the small intestine and colon are the sites where nutrition and water is transported. If there is any problem with the nutrients, it will lead to malabsorption and if there is any problem with water, it will lead to diarrhea or electrolyte imbalance will lead uh, to many alkalosis and acidosis problems. We know that this area is also um, the principal site of um, principal site of immune reactions. So, because there are many gut floras or which are unculturable as well. So, um, if there is going to be any altered composition of the microbiome, it will lead to many diseases that are associated with diet, and will lead to infectious and inflammatory processes. Whereas cologne is the most common site of the gastrointestinal neoplasia in the Western population. Now we are going to start with the intestinal obstruction, which is of two types. One of them is um, mechanical and the other is functional. Functional is due to uh, peristalsis um, that may be defective. Whereas mechanical one is due to hernias, intestinal adhesions, interceptions and volvulus. We are going to see each one of them there, what are they? These all four um, problems are account for about 80% of the diseases whereas tumors and infarctions will account for the remainder ones. The main clinical features that are seen in intestinal obstruction may be nausea, vomiting, uh, distensions um, with abdominal pain as well as constipation. The surgical intervention is necessary for the correction and these are some of the mechanical problems such as hernias, in which uh, a hernial sac is formed with a narrow neck. There may be adhesions that are associated with inflammation as well as injuries. There may be a volvulus in which a knot is formed of the bowel segments. And if this knot is present in, in the sigmoidal region, it will show a coffee bean appearance in the radiological um, examination. Then this is interception, we are going to study it now. Um, interception is when a part of the segment goes into another part of the segment that is distal to it and it is mostly occurring in um, children that are less than two years. So now we are going to start interception, which is also known as telescoping. In this, a segment of the intestine is constricted by the wave of peristalsis and telescopes into a segment that is distal to it, just like what I told you before. It may be due to peristalsis, and when it goes into the distal segment, it will take the mesentery along with it. The complications, if this interception is not treated, will lead to obstruction and mesenteric vessel compression and infarction. Like I said, it occurs in children less than two years of age, and the main causes uh, along with the peristalsis are that there may be a viral infection due to rota or norovirus and due to reactive hyperplasia of the Peyer's patches. We can diagnose this interception by the barium and air enemas, whereas we can also see bull's eye appearance radiologically. Surgery is necessary for its correction. It can also be caused by the mechal diverticulum if it is reversed and the diverticula goes into the cecum. It is associated with pain and the child may guard his abdomen because of this pain. The stool may be red, red currant jelly in color and um, this is very diagnosis of this interception. Next, we are going to study the uh, Schisfung disease in which, which occurs in about one of the 5,000 live births and it is a congenital problem in which um, there may be absent ganglionic plexus. Like we see here, it is more common in males, but if it occurs in females, it is more severe. It is, um, it, if a sibling is having this disease, then there are chances that the other siblings will also have this disease. In neonates, it can be seen or diagnosed if the neonate is not passing its meconium in the immediate postnatal period and is then followed by the obstructive constipation. The major uh, complications and threat to the baby may be enterocolitis and fluid and electrolyte dis 
uh, disturbances and perforations in peritonitis and the surgical resection is again very um, important for its correction and we will surgically reject the area that is aganglionic and then anastomose the normal areas that are uh, proximal and distal to those segments. Now what is the pathogenesis of this uh, disease? In this the new um, the entire enteric neuronal plexus is formed by neural crest cells and if these neural crest cells fail to migrate into that area this will lead to this disease that is also known as congenital aganglionic megacolon so in that segment neither uh, it is going to have mesonas, uh, some mucosal plexus nor it is going to have the or uh, or back mesenteric plexus there may be um, uncoordinated peristaltic contractions and the mutation will occur in tyrosine RET as well as uh, maybe in disease modifying genes or environmental factors may be contributing. Now we are going to see the morphology. Mostly this disease occurs in the rectum and uh, grossly we are going to see normal or contracted appearance but the proximal colon that is present proximal to the aganglionic portion may be progressively dilating because of the distal obstruction and the diagnosis is always made by the same pathogenesis point that there will be absence of the ganglionic cells in that affected segment. The last thing about the intestinal obstruction disease is the abdominal hernias which are mostly occurring in the inguinal area or femoral canal or umbilical area and uh, there will be a sac that is known as hernial sac and there will be protrusions of the bowel areas mostly the small intestine loops omentum but large bowel may also produce into it and uh, the neck is constricted and if there is pressure at the neck of the pouch there may be um, impaired venous drainage which will lead to stasis and edema whereas if there will be increased bulk of um, herniated loop due to edema and stasis there will be permanent entrapment of the bowel loop in there and it will need lead to incarceration and if the vessels are compromised it will lead to strangulation which will result in the infarction of the bowel segment.